Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. I'm back, ready to do a review, but it's a much special one. It's going to be a Blu-ray review that I just picked up recently, especially for its 35th anniversary, which I'm actually reviewing this on Sunday. <laughs> yeah, March 21st, 2021, but I bet when I upload this on YouTube, It'll be on Monday. Well, who knows? But I finally got it. Rad. On Mondo X, or I think it's Mondo 10, Blu-ray Steelbook, courtesy of Utopia Distribution and Mill Creek Entertainment. I can't believe it. Right there. Yeah, so you have to take this off from this uh, clear case, clear slip case, and this is what it looks like. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, you have crude right there. You can see the sun um, in this awesome BMX bike of his, and then you can see uh, Bart Taylor. Who's uh, racing along with the rest of the BMX bikers? They're racing the hell track, and comes with a code for Movie Spree, which is from Mill Creek. Uh, it tells you that you have to download the free uh, Spree app or visit their website to redeem the code using all these instructions. And they can also accept uh, Roku, Amazon, App Store, Google Play, and App Store. But not Voodoo, nor Movies Anywhere. I know, that sucks. But I'll, I'll find a way. But here's the, the look of all the rest of the BMX bikers. And I'll show you this again. <laughs> Perfectly designed, exactly what an 80's movie cherish and um, I do have the disc uh, I just put it onto a blu-ray case just to be safe because you know I almost had trouble taking the disc out and I was afraid that I was almost gonna break it you know, I just hate those plongs that they use that are so tight that it's hard to get the disc out you have to like try to put your thumb in it and tr or try to twist it around and see if it can come right out easily. So I just put on one of those empty Blu-ray cases and I'm going to keep it that way until I find a way to fix this problem. But here's the disc. That's where you have Crew Jones. This awesome uh, clothing uniform that he had on with the helmet and the goggles and the mask. And, and he's riding around on his BMX bike up in the air. I got Rad uh, when I ordered this on BestBuy.com and I had to pick it up as soon as possible so it doesn't end up uh, getting sold out really fast. And yeah, they were selling it for like, goodness knows how much they were getting. Like they were getting like so many, um, like I think they had like five of them left or sometimes they'll start stocking some more, so you never know. And does contain bonus features. Uh, the movie, of course, um, is pretty identical to the Vinegar Syndrome release. Uh, that's the 4K Ultra HD and Blu-ray combo pack that came out last year. It was a limited edition, only 12,000 units available to the public. But sad to say, they sold out like hotcakes, and now scalpers are about to charge us an arm and a leg at certain websites like eBay, Amazon, or any other. And that sucks. And I blew my chances on that. I was going to get it last year. I mean, I was going to set it on pre-order, but I didn't have enough money. I mean, it was pricey. It was it was like going up to like 40 bucks. Ridiculous. So that's even worse. <laughs> Well, actually, what's worse is having to charge up to a hundred, like even more, for for just one set alone. That's just stupid. Um, 
so yes, uh, they have the movies now being scanned in 4K from its 35 millimeter original camera negative. So yes, the movie looks incredibly superior to that release. In fact, it looks even better than ever. I mean, the colors are so vivid. Uh, you can see how the skin tones are more natural. And of course, we all have pinkish skin tones here. It has a nice uh, shades of brain structures. It, it really flows so much better. It's exactly what an 80s movie is supposed to look like in the first place. So it didn't, uh, they didn't use any DNR and edge enhancement and all. I mean, it is, it is pretty sharp at times. I mean, for a movie that was filmed in 1985 and came out in 86. I mean, this is incredible. I waited this long to finally see this on a physical copy since it's been stuck in with bootlegs around, you know, bootleg DVDs because they only had this movie on VHS, which was released by Embassy Home Entertainment and Laserdisc too, so of course people had to start making all these copies and I know they have seen better days, but this beats the crap out of those and, and then we were getting all these HD uh, prints that were available from this HD cable channel called NHD2 uh, as well as um, I think some rare 35mm print that's close enough to look exactly alike but it wasn't easy <laughs> But this really blows it away. It really does. I'm just happy. I was proud of it because this is how you're supposed to handle uh, films this way. Then you got the rad uh, Q&A session. It's a virtual Q&A. So you have uh, Bill Allen along with Ty Shire. Yeah, who plays the mother of Crude Jones. Yeah, because Crude is played by Bill Allen. Bart Connor, who's an Olympic uh, gymnast, won several. Uh, gold medals and seeing that this was his feature film debut Crude's uh, nemesis Bart uh, screenwriter Sam Bernard and you got uh, and it's hosted by Jorma Takone who's the director of the film Hot Wad yeah he also had worked on Saturday Night Live and all that stuff and and he has an experience uh, for the movie because he saw this as a kid too and he also wanted to own the BMX bike himself that's what inspired that I wasn't really big on Hot Rod the movie but I guess you get the idea uh, archival video interviews with the cast and crew yes yeah, so you get all the actors joining by and the original behind the scenes uh, featurettes which is part of it and then you got the Break the Ice music video by John uh, Farnham, it's great to see that. Um, and I stand corrected too because I did do a movie review of Rad four years ago. And this was at the time when I made a boule copy myself. I had to find this online. That's the same print that's available. But well, I didn't have any choice because, you know, I was hoping when on earth will this movie ever get a release? And I think another reason why it wasn't released at all, it wasn't ready yet, is because even though it was long overdue, it might have been because of purgatory reasons. It had to do with sponsorships around. I mean, yes, they had to pay a lot of royalties to actually bring it in. And I think it also had to do with, uh, I mean, if you saw the credits at the end of the movie, I mean, there's also some experts that actually had them red listed for a good reason. And I guess they have to pay royalties for sure if they can get the rights. I think it also has to do with, um, well, music copyrights too. I mean, yes, they had to pick whatever song they could for the soundtrack. And I figure that would, that depends on how the, how the studio can handle. I mean, seeing that the film was released by TriStar Pictures with, uh, Taya's, um, well, basically her husband, no longer with us, Jack Schwartzman, um, who um, produced this film through uh, Taya Film uh, 2 Productions. I mean, they had to fund this movie as, as quickly as they can. I mean, also because at the time, you know, it, even in the 80s, you know, BMX uh, Racers was very popular. I mean, everyone wants to 
get a BMX bike. I mean, my cousin Anna actually had a BMX bike a long time ago, and I wanted to ride one. But then I was going to fall and slip. And all. I was just hoping I don't end up doing all these tricks, because that would be kind of strange. But I know, I mean, people had to do a lot of dangerous stunts, too. I mean, even in the movie, everything was shot in slow motion. They had a lot of stunt writers, and then they had other actors to do so, even though it was hard to risk. I mean, of course, my favorite scene of them all was was at the prom scene where you have uh, Bill Allen and Lori Laughlin, you know, riding around, you know, doing all these special tricks. It's almost like a dance move. Well, to the tune of from real life called Send Me an Angel. I love that. It's incredible. Um, of course, already Lori Laughlin is now in prison. So they couldn't get her to do the interview for the virtual Q&A. And speaking of the virtual Q&A, um, it's not easy having to watch this on a disc, though, because, of course, it, you could tell this was all taken directly from Skype. And I know they did it because of the pandemic, so they had no other choice. But they did what they could to contact the people behind the movie. You know, we get to see Tyra Shire, who surprisingly was more enthusiastic than she was in the movie. Because you can tell by her expression she makes, I mean, she's always so angry and bitter. It's like she didn't even want to be in the film at all, but I guess, well, she proved her wrong. <laughs> but, no, but she had a great time. I mean, she was thrilled about it because, you know, Hal Needham, the, the director, no longer with us, the, gay, the same man who gave us the Smoking the Bandit films and the Cannibal Run films, not to mention he's a stuntman himself. I mean, he was appreciated to do something different that that can relate to everyone and also because this is a coming of age story and it's a drama but it's a sports film that everybody wants to get up and ride on with these amazing stunts and and the fact that they had to go on one of the dangerous uh, tracks ever called Hell Track sponsored by 7-Eleven and Chief Auto Parts well now known as AutoZone <laughs> yeah they really uh, took it to the limit you know, and then they had to go ass sliding too, um, right in the neck of the the river. Yeah, there's another great moment too, and everything. So, okay, now I don't own the Vinegar Syndrome release, which sad to say, that's where the features were sorely lacking in a way. Uh, they had three commentaries. Uh, one was with actress and producer Taya Shire joining with producer Robert Schwartzman. Two had just Bill Allen. Free had Bill Allen once again to join with Bart Conner, along with writers Sam Bernard and BMX writers Eddie Falola, Warren Paurelio, Jose Hanez, and Jeremy Moser. Then you got the Stuntman Direct, which is a 16 minute um, featurette, which has an interview that they were going to go for this forthcoming rad documentary. I don't know how that's going to turn out, but who knows. But it, it features uh, Hal Needham before he passed away and sharing his personal history and during the years of, of the, being in the military before moving to Los Angeles. Of course, ends up becoming a stuntman and later become a director, meeting friends like Burt Reynolds uh, as well as um, Don DeLuise and all the rest of the cast. You know, because this is the first time he got to direct the movie Smokey and the Bandit. And then it just goes to show that this was going to be his new project for Rad that, that will gear towards uh, the, the younger audience um, for those who experience uh, BMX. And then you got Writing Something Rad, which is um, 17 minutes, which has co writer Sam Bernard sharing his Hollywood inventions. Um, also, his relationship with producer Robert Levy, you know, produced all the Smoking Abandoned movies, and the discovery of BMX and all that, and tried to, to also to find out that Needham was more interested in cars than than bikes, and they wanted to push it more for its PG rating. Yeah, and there's like a 25 anniversary uh, event that 
that they have for this uh, feature, uh, which was shot at um, Alberta, Canada, Cochrane, in, in 2011. So that's where it has all the autographs and bike replicas, BMX races, location tours, stunt demonstrations, interviews with Bill Allen and Ailey Frola, and a whole lot more. They had cast and crew interviews um, with uh, half of the people involved and how they're ex explaining about, you know, how Bart Connor got cast to play the part of, of Crude's nemesis, Bart. You know, the fact that he acted like a jerk, a hot shot throughout the course of the film, only to discover by the end, you know, he'll probably change his ways. You know, once they get into the race, the Herald track and all that. Um, you know, seeing that because, you know, he's an Olympic gymnast. I mean, he, you know, he, he has been training for a long time. He wins all these gold medals and, and yes, he even injures himself, you know, well, you know, performing gymnastics and all that. He wasn't so sure if he would be able to make it in, but then Needham just says, well, you know, I'll probably f find something to to heal your wounds and your your leg, your knee, and your injured knee and all, and then you'll get right to it. <laughs> so they have to put a cast on him so that way he'll be able to I mean, at first he had to wear crutches, but then I guess later he had to try to find a way to move around. So th those are the ones that were included on the Vinegar Syndrome release, and sad to say, I wish I could see those. And they should have been on the Mill Creek release. So that's why. So that was kind of disappointing. But I guess I made it up for it with the Q&A. I just wish that the Q&A was a lot better. I'm not really too fond by all these virtual Q and A's because, seeing that they're all taken from Skype, I it levels down to you know a lot of pixelations, macro blocking, and worse yet, it drops frames, like it freezes. Um, you do get to hear the sound, but then there's a lot of echoes around. I mean, hey, I had that experience when I see Q and A's all the time on the internet. I know it's it's just not fascinating to see because I, I almost had trouble having to hear Sam uh, Bernard speaking especially when he's already looking like he went to the dentist but he was wearing the the rad cap and I guess he was trying to speak friendly as he could yeah um, okay but at that point on I'm just happy that I got this Blu-ray. Yeah, they all, also I forgot to mention they didn't include the trailer. Yeah, the trailer was awesome. I love that trailer, and they didn't have a photo gallery either, so they should have had that. Um, God, they should have had everything. I mean, this would have been a more definitive release than ever before, and it would have been worth this price of twenty-five dollars. So, what were they thinking? <laughs> But that's okay. I mean, I'm just happy that now I finally got it on the palm of my hands. And I'm just happy that at least I don't have to worry about, you know, not be able to track it down anywhere. Have a hard time looking for it. So, I mean, pick your poison. I mean, this is worth it. I mean, even if you don't have the vinegar syndrome release. But if you wanted to get both, I mean... Luckily for everyone, I mean, they're they're just glad that they pick it up. But it just sucks that I wish I had picked it up um, before this. Yeah, it would have been a great double dip. But maybe somewhere out of the blue, if, if it ends up at one of those stores... No, I'm just saying, like, if it winds up at Goodwill or, or even uh, <laughs> all these thrift stores, or maybe one of those independent mom-and-pop stores... And somehow, out of the blue, it wants up there. Like, you see the slip cover of this lenticular holographic cover. Yeah, two of them. And then it has the 4K Ultra HD disc. And then it has two discs included. All exactly how it should be. And they have it for, like, a lot cheaper than ever before. I would be, like, jumping for joy. You know, I'd be like, you know... 
doing all these backflips. No, but I can't do that. <laughs> if, I, if I ever got the nerve to actually finally found it for a lot cheaper, and unless somehow some uh, some user winds up selling this uh, for a lot less, and I end up uh, getting suckered into it, then yes, I'd be so thrilled to finally own that one. But for now, I'm glad I got the steel book. It looks awesome, totally radish and totally radical than ever. It serves its purpose. It's worth it. I love it. But you know what would be even much better though if Milk Creek will actually release um, a non steel book uh, Blu ray. And maybe this time they might carry those uh, features if it's possible. I'd be surprised if they end up putting out a 4K Ultra HD themselves. But I guess it's up to Utopia Distribution and see how they they can handle it better. I don't know. I just feel like, you know, Vinegar Syndrome could have just came up with another edition standardly so people can actually afford it. And I had to waste their money on anything else. So That's just how I felt. Because I don't want to spend an arm in a lake. That's just not right. So that's my um, Blu-ray review of the Mondo 10 Blu-ray Steelbook of Rad. And I'm glad you appreciate it. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.